When you are faced with a situation, especially when you are recording live bands and you have multiple microphones recording each instrument, you might have mic bleed. That means the sound of one instrument is bleeded into the microphone of another instrument. Or you have recorded a live acoustic drum kit and having multiple microphones, the sounds of the different parts of the drum kit is also captured and recorded into the microphones of other parts of the drum kit. So how do we remove those mic bleeds from different instruments coming into that microphone? Of course, mic positioning is the crucial part of setting up and recording a live band or live acoustic drums. But there are times where we may require to actually clean up some of those mic bleeds for better sounding, more tight sounding recordings ready for mixing. Now we can try the hard way and go in and edit and delete all the parts we don't need from that track. But there is an easier way. In this video, I'm going to show you how we're going to use the gate plugin in Studio One version 4.6 to achieve the same result with the fraction of the time. Of course, you can do this in any other DAW that supports a gate plugin. Here I'm using Studio One version 4.6 Prime Edition, which is the free version of Studio One, with the Pro Plugin Bundle. The Pro Plugin Bundle is additional plugin that you can purchase, Studio One Prime Pro Plugin Bundle from Personas. They are $28.99 Australian dollars, but I think they're about 20 US dollars. And in this plugin bundle, you not only get the gate, but you also get the Pro EQ, the compressor, limiter, and room reverb. For the price, you can't beat it. But if you already have the artist or the professional versions, the gate is already included. Let's have a listen to the drum kit, identify the problem, and then using gate, try to solve or minimize the problem. Not sure if you captured that, but there is a resonance sound of the drum kit in one of the microphones, which is a Tom's microphone. Let's have a listen to it again and see if you can hear it. Let me enhance that with a Pro plugin, just increasing the band where I see the resonances so you can hear it as well. Right there. Right. Now that we know our problem, we can certainly go in and mute all the parts that we don't actually need but that's going to be a really long task. So that's why we need to use the gate. So let's add the gate. Just replaced the plugin. Here is the gate. It has several options that we need to select and adjust. Let me explain a few of them. The open knob means basically it's a threshold where the gate will open and let the signal through and then the close one is when the signal goes below the gate will close. The range, it basically allows how much reduction of the signal it's going to happen. Attack basically allows how quickly the gate will open and release is how quickly or slowly it will actually release and close the gate. And hold, which is quite important, is how long to wait after the signal has disappeared before the gate is closed. Now that we know how the gate functions and operates, let's adjust the settings until we get the result that we are after. So I'm just going to mute all of the other tracks and just leave the toms on. Zoom out a bit. Just going to put it into a loop. Enable my loop. I'm just going to adjust my open gate until the sound disappears of the snare. I 
Okay, so that should adjust it. I can still hear the snare behind it. So if I... That's what the range will do. It's the amount of signal reduced. Probably about 50 dB should be... Around 50 dB should be really great. Just going to make sure that we've got the roll. I normally tend to have twice the range in dB of the close threshold than the open. So that way I wait for the signal to completely die out to at least 30, 32 dB before the gate actually closes. Release, we probably want to have that slow release as well to allow gentle closure of the gate as it expands. It's probably about 400 500 milliseconds and to hold it again I want those rolls to come in probably a bit longer I'm gonna try to put it here there's more rolls there of the toms I think that sounds really good there now. All I hear is toms and nothing else. Let's add that into our mix. Just gonna solo the drum bus. Let's remove the gate. And you can hear how it really cleans up the drums and makes it really nice and tight. Just go right back to the beginning again and see how the intro, which is the really, really important for the song, as the first couple seconds of the song starting out to get a good impression and you really don't want that resonance right in the drums. Now without it. And if you have really good headphones or studio monitors you should be able to hear that resonance at the bottom of the frequency range really making the whole drum muddy. Of course we could add the gate to our overheads as well. We can also add some low cut to our overheads so that any kick and lower tom signals don't come into our overheads. But usually overheads is trying to capture the whole drum kit with the, all of the cymbals and the hi-hats and everything else in between. Well, I hope this gave you a basic information of how to use the gate to clean up your mic bleeds in your recording. Till next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio, guys.